All right. My name is Crystal Chung, and I'm the community manager at wikihow.com. I've been the community manager there for two years, but I've been involved with the project as an employee for the seven years that it's been around. And I've been um, very closely involved with the community for that whole time. So the reason I'm doing this presentation, this is my first Wikimania and my first presentation in like 10 years. So. Um, the reason I felt compelled to do this presentation is because Wikipedia has gotten a lot of publicity for their gender ratio and um, for having um, about 10% female editors according to the surveys that have been done. And, uh, and so with my experience with WikiHow, I've, it's, it really hasn't been a problem. So when I heard about these problems on Wikipedia, it was just a little interesting to me because I, was, I just started to wonder what factors led to that gender ratio on Wikipedia, and why is it different on WikiHow? And I'm sure that's a question that a lot of people are curious about, and a lot of people have actually asked me about. So this is gonna be the beginning of a discussion about what some differences that led up to that might be, and um, one thing I want to emphasize is that WikiHow did not deliberately aim to have a, a good gender ratio, not that it's a bad thing to aim for, of course, but it's just something that we really lucked out with. We have a really great community and one of the facets of that is that it's a diverse community when it comes to gender. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is explore some of the ideas of why WikiHow may have come to, to that gender ratio. And, um, and I'll also admit that I haven't been very experienced with Wikipedia. I've made a few edits and um, felt a little uh, scared <laughs> after making those edits and not wanting to argue with people. So, um, and apparently from having been here, that's a lot of people's experiences. And so, um, so yeah, so some of the stuff I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be saying much about what Wikipedia can do, just some very broad ideas because I'm not that familiar with Wikipedia. It's not really my area of expertise, but I hope that those of you who are on Wikipedia and other wikis and other sites that are striving for a better gender ratio can draw what insights you may from what we do on WikiHow and from the patterns that I've noticed from doing this presentation. So just a little bit about WikiHow, for those of you who aren't familiar, it was started in 2005 by Jack Herrick. It is a, it is a um, technically a for-profit organization, although we consider ourselves a hybrid organization, which is a for-profit organization that does non-profit kind of stuff. And we have 141,000 how-to articles. We get about 16,000 main namespace edits per month, 3,500 registrations a week, about 1,000 new articles a week, and we're in the top 100 sites on Quantcast. So as you can see, we're a way, way smaller community than Wikipedia. A little bit about our community, other than that it's awesome. Um, we get about 300 people who make more than five edits every week. Um, we have around 50 to 70 contributors who have made their 10th edit in the past week, every week. Um, around 65 people with over 500 total edits who are still active, and we consider that when they've made at least 10 edits in the past week. And this statistic right here is what we consider to be our very active contributors and really our, our core community members. They're the people who, um, who have been around for a long time who are really invested in the heart of WikiHow. And, and that's really a great number, but we, we, it's definitely grown over time. It's probably doubled in like the past two or three years. And we usually get about 75 people who have made over 100 edits in the past month. So what I did was, was um, a small survey. Um, we, haven't, we haven't done official surveys in our community. Um, in part because it's just, we have a very small staff. We have about 10 people on our staff and um, I'm the main person who interacts with the community and there's a lot of stuff to do other than do surveys. <laughs> but um, so what I did for this survey, this is the first survey I did and, um, and I looked over a three week period um, at those people who filled the statistics that I just gave earlier. So I looked at the very active editors over the past week, the editors who'd made 25, at least 25 edits over the past week, the top 50 editors of the week by edit count, 
um, new editors, which were the people who made their 10th edit in the past week, and the top 20 authors from the past week. So for those three weeks, I, I kept, list, kept a list of those names. I pulled up those names and kept a list of them and sent them a survey. The survey that I sent, let's see. Oh, and th that, that was a total of 274 editors. So the survey that I did was pretty basic. Um, I, it would, the, mo the main information I wanted to know was people's gender because it's not something we ask people to fill out or identify themselves as on WikiHow. Um, and it's really hard to tell. So, um, so I asked them to enter their username. I asked them their gender and made that the only required um, question. And I asked a few other things that I thought might be interesting in observing um, the relationship between gender and other factors. So I asked them if their age. For their age, I asked them if, um, if they were less than 15 years old to check one box, and if they were 15 or older to check another, or if they were over 15, check another. And so the reason I did that is because we, on WikiHow, we don't track information for anyone under 13 years old, so I didn't want anyone to reveal their age if they were 13 or younger. Um, so blanket 15, arbitrary number 15 and younger, check that box. I asked them if they edited anonymously before they registered, and then I asked them what the first activity that they did when they joined the WikiHow Wiki community was. And if they did multiple things, choose the activity you did the most of when you just started out. And for those of you who might not be able to see, the options were write articles, edit existing articles and topics I know well, edit existing articles by correcting spelling and grammar, add intro images, this, that's a tool we have that's called the Intro Image Adder app where you're presented with several images and are, allowed, are asked to pick one that fits as the intro image for that article. For troll recent changes, we have a special tool for that. Categorize, we also have a tool for that, but we haven't for a long time, or other, and then they can fill in what they did. Um, 126 people answered the survey, and 56% of them were female, which is cool. Um, and the way I, I did the survey was I left people talk page messages. We didn't do any kind of site notice. I reached out to these people personally because uh, our community is, is traditionally very guarded about their personal information. So if it came from some generic canned message by some bot or, or even like a researcher, I suspect a lot of people wouldn't answer. So I considered myself very lucky to get as many people who answered their survey uh, as they did. So I want to look at the relationship between gender and age. Um, a few interesting things, which is, I don't know if this is a pattern on Wikipedia as well. I'd imagine that it is about having a, a much younger population, but um, it's definitely a pattern on WikiHow that 52% of our editors are 15 or younger, and 24% of them are 16 to 25. And again, this is a really small sample size, so, um, not statistically significant. I had a slide in here that was really sarcastic and it's gone. But um, <laughs> it's a Futurama meme, but oh well. Um, so what this is, if, if we were to draw any conclusions from this, it would be that like that a huge chunk of our community is 25 and younger. But among that community, among that section of the community, females outnumber males. Um, but then as you get older, 25 and older, the contributor is more likely to be male. And here's a graph showing the gender and age pattern. As you can see in the 15 and younger demographic, um, females are in blue, males are in red. Um, females have a much higher um, statistic there. 16 to 25, it's even with females are a little bit more. Um, 26 to 35 and, and onwards, you see less and less and less females until 66 and over, there's just no females uh, that were surveyed in that three week period who answered the survey. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, what this tells us is that um, young women are, are very active on WikiHow and that we're not doing as good of a job of reaching out to women who are older, but it is very promising that if the, chunk, like the majority of our site is younger people, that among younger people, we do have a lot of women. 
when I tried to look at the difference between gender and activity, the type of activity they did, there wasn't any significant difference. It was pretty half and half. Um, half of the people who answered the survey contributed anonymously before registering. And among both males and females, the most popular activities were editing to correct spelling and grammar and editing topics of expertise. There's this, should be a forward slash in there. That's very ironic. Um, gender and activity. I did this graph to show the different statistics for the different, not the types of activity, but the level of activity. The very active editors, there were 55 of those people, and among them, male and red, female, blue, um, males outnumbered females. Um, among the people who did at least 25 edits over the past week, also males outnumbered females. Among the top 50 editors over the past week, generally males outnumbered females. Among new editors, females very much outnumbered males. And among authors, male, uh, females outnumbered males, but only seven people. By authors, By authors um, well, we had a statistic for the top 20 authors over the past week, so the top 20 people, the 20 people who wrote the most articles over the past week, who started the most articles. Oh, these are the new articles. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so it's, it's only seven people. Authors are really hard to, to reach out to. And on, I don't know how it is on Wikipedia, but on WikiHow, authors, especially people who focus specifically on writing articles, really just like to do their own thing. And it's really hard to get any information about them or get them to engage with the community. But um, fortunately, we do have authors in, in our community who are really great and who do interact with the community. And they tend to like also doing um, authoring, and, authoring and editing. But um, for people who are exclusively authors, historically, they've been a little hard to get information for. So that, that's totally subjective. I do think, um, in general, that we get a pretty even, um, just subjectively speaking, from my experience with authors, we get a pretty even ratio of males to females and you authors. But I thought this was interesting because um, it told me as a community manager that we're getting a lot of females who start out and make their 10th edit, but who don't make it up to that, that level onto, at the same level as, as um, men do. So um, potential reasons why we have um, a relatively even gender ratio, I'm gonna go through these one by one, but just an overview. I think we have a very, an exceptionally friendly culture at WikiHow. I've been on other sites and, um, and looking at it from the perspective of community and knowing what I know, um, I pay special attention to how other sites make me feel and I'm so impatient with other sites. If I go to other sites and people aren't nice to me, I'm like, screw this, I'm out of here. I'm going back to WikiHow. Um, and I think we also have low barriers of entry. One of the reasons I don't edit Wikipedia a lot is because uh, I feel kind of lazy about learning how to do all this stuff, because WikiHow, we have a lot of tools that, that make it really, really easy to figure stuff out. So um, and I imagine that's the case. Like Some people are lazy by nature, and, uh, and that's definitely one of the things that can influence that. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the nature of the content and how that might affect the um, the nature of the community, and uh, and I also think the fact that we're a small community has plays a big role in um, the nature of our community and the gender breakdown. So, friendly culture. Um, I've been talking a lot about this with the WikiHow folks, most of whom are sitting up here, and um, and with Jack, the founder, uh, who isn't here today, but. Um, but when, when he started WikiHow, um, I was involved, but I was doing editor things, and he was, he was the community manager, essentially. Um, he would reach out, there were, he would reach out to every single person who came on the site and say, hey, welcome, you know, it's really cool that you just made an edit, even if it was a bad edit. Um, and I think he established that attitude early on. Any of you who have met Jack know that he's a really, really nice person, and he's, not egotistical at all. He rides his skateboard to meetings and doesn't eat meat. So, <laughs> um, and I think that's one of the things that helps. Um, and another, 
another thing, another thing that's been interesting to me that I don't know if it's a cause or if it's something that came from the same influence from the founders that we have a very even staff gender ratio. Um, I don't know how it is among the staff on Wikipedia or other wikis, but we have a very small staff and it is very women friendly. It's, I think it's about 10 people and four out of four of them are women, including engineers. So um, another thing that I think maintains a friendly culture, we have very minimal policy and templates. I think I, I went to a presentation yesterday that I think that said that they have 400 help pages on Wikipedia. Um, I'd estimate we have more like at most 100. Um, and they're, they're pretty straightforward. I mean, um, when I explain them to people and when, when people read them, they, they actually understand why we have those policies in place. It's not rocket science. Um, we, we have some policies like that help keep the, the red tape from getting too long. Um, for example, if someone wants to make a template that is any kind of coaching message that's not a thanks template, not an encouraging template, it requires community approval or else they cannot make it and use it. Um, and we got rid of welcome templates because we found that a lot of people were putting um, warnings in welcome templates and telling them, don't do this, don't do that. And, uh, and there was another issue, which is that with our very young community, they were starting to look very colorful and um, giving the impression that we were MySpace. <laughs> um, so um, I think a community, I wrote there community soft skills. Um, soft skills is something that I've been learning about a lot about. Um, ever since having become community manager, um, there's a lot of skills that you cannot quantify that help a lot with, with um, keeping things running smoothly in a community and among societies and among people. And I think our community as a whole has really good soft skills. I mean, they have good hard skills, but um, as far as soft skills and making people feel welcome and making people feel comfortable, our community is really good at it. And, uh, and I, I just want to say also that on our community, what you say is, is just as important as how you say it. Um, it's not a community where um, if you what you say is right, but if you say it in a mean way, people just won't listen. So people will be like, hey, you know, you have a good point, but can you tone it down? And I think um, when a, like an argumentative troll rolls into our forums and you know says makes a good point, as argumentative trolls often do, um, a lot of people will be like, hey, yeah, that's true, but you know, we don't like the way you said that because it's mean. I'm gonna move a little quickly through these because I have just a few minutes left, but um, I think we have low barriers of entry. Jack did a presentation earlier about the tools that we have that make, that make editors um, feel like they can easily contribute to our wiki. Um, we have a lot of newbie friendly tools like Spell Checker, which is a tool that shows you um, articles with spelling errors, highlights them, and then you can change them. Intro image adder, which I briefly mentioned before, you're shown a couple of images, asked, hey, do any of these fit as a good introductory image for this article? If yes, import it. If not, look for another one or skip. Um, and Quality Guardian, which is a tool where it's kind of like Recent Changes Patrol, where you get to vote on whether you thought a certain edit was a good one or not, and um, it's kind of, it, and then after you vote, you get to see who else voted on that, and then it takes two or three votes for an image to be removed, for example, if several people voted that it was a bad image. Um, anonymous users are welcomed upon first edit. We actually adapted a tool from Wikia for, about this. Um, it's a welcoming tool that as soon as someone registers an account or makes a first edit, they're left a friendly note from someone in the community. It automatically signs off as the last admin or a new article booster that is active on the site. And we have something called Patrol Coach, which is in our recent changes patrol tool, where it gives a little test and you don't realize that you're being tested. And, um, and if you press the right choice, it says, congratulations, you did it awesome on this. This is really good. But if you make the wrong choice, like you approve vandalism or spam, it'll tell you, oh, this is a bad idea. You, know, you really need to make sure that you watch out for this kind of thing. Where just in case, since you're still learning, we're going to undo your patrols, your last 50 patrols. And, but keep going, keep trying, and, and you'll get the hang of it. I hate this phrase. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I love cats. I have five cats. I am a cat lady in the making. But um, 
I think with WikiHow, there's more than one way to do things. Wikipedia has an issue where, when you're talking about how to describe something, there's facts and there's only one right fact. So people can argue about one right answer and I'm gonna move on, you guys get the idea. Small community size, Dunbar's number, some of you are familiar with that. It's the idea that when you have about 150 people, enough people that everyone knows each other's name, that you can actually have a better group dynamic and then when it gets beyond that, you start having all kinds of problems. Um, we don't have as much of an issue of exclusivity, but it's becoming more and more of an issue. We're having the same phenomenon as Wikipedia where the number of admins is going lower while the number of the community is getting higher. And I think we can learn a lot from Wikipedia here because Wikipedia grew really fast, really, really fast. And, um, and I was telling Jack that I have nightmares that if our community grew that fast, I would like die. So, um, yeah. So ideas, um, I, I think, I don't, I don't, like I said, I'm not familiar with the politics of Wikipedia, but I know that Jack's leadership established a, a really good pattern of mutual respect. I feel like our community respects both Jack and me and the staff, and I think our staff respects our community so much. Um, I, I also went to a presentation yesterday about the Wikipedia Tea House, and I was telling um, Mike who I was there with, I was like, that looks like WikiHow. Um, that project is amazing. Um, it's, it's got 78% women. Um, it's designed to be aesthetically friendly. Its emphasis on, uh, is on helping newbies. So I think Wikipedia could learn a lot from, from doing more of that. Um, and I think in my experience in this conference, Wikipedians in real life have been really, really nice. So um, way nicer than the Wikipedians online. So I think, um, <laughs> yeah. There's that phenomenon where people are meaner when they don't see you face to face, but I think it's that the, the, you know, the friendlier Wikipedians are here and are, I wanna make Wikipedia better. And, um, and I've, I've been to presentations where they're like, yeah, Wikipedia's really mean. <laughs> so uh, and it's, it's, it's funny and it's true. And, and um, so um, I think if Wikipedians can import more of that, this, this awesome um, feel into the website, that would be great. And, uh, and that's it. Should I do questions now, or? I guess we can take one or two questions during the next speaker. Okay. Up and okay. Um, so the next speaker can come up and set up. Um, any questions? Sure. Um, can I grab the microphone? Okay. I can repeat your question. Okay. Uh, so this is two questions. Feel free to answer the one you care about more. I'm sure other people can answer them, I guess. Uh, but I noticed that you had a big drop off in gender percentage between a unit. The question is, um, with that drop off with new editors, um, with the gender drop off there in terms of number of female contributors, whether there are other factors that might be playing into it, that's, that's what you're asking. Um, and whether that's been surveyed, no, I have not done any other surveys, um, but I didn't even know that was the phenomenon until I did this survey, so that's definitely something I'm gonna be looking at. And, um, and it, it, it really could be so many, like at that point it could really stop being an issue of gender and it could start being an issue of just um, what kind of topics, like you said, they might be interested or what kind of skill set they have. So that's something that I do intend to look into and I'm not sure a survey would really tell us much since it's such small numbers, but on a personal basis, which is how I do most of my anecdotal research, um, talking to people and seeing what they're interested in and why they drop off and what can get them back and reaching out more to those people who might not be coming back. Lois. I can actually speak to that. I am one of those older women on WikiHow. I'm over 45, and you don't have to know how much further. <laughs> um, but some of it is just lack of familiarity and lack of comfortableness with technology at all. I honestly, my first edit on here, I was scared to death and thought, no one will read a word I've read here. And no one is more shocked than I am 
that five years later, I'm still on the side and I'm an admin. I mean, who would have imagined? Good for you. Of course. <laughs> Wiki How is a very friendly place. Um, from the start, I had three or four other users saying, that was great. How did you write that? It was such a cool idea. Can you show us more? Hey, have you thought about putting a picture in? Here's how it's done. So some of it is just hooking up the technophobic little old ladies with somebody who's comfortable with it and will help them along. And I was one of those. I, I was, I, I'm still surprised that I have been there five and a half years and have, you know, what, 17 and a half thousand edits and 200 articles and oh my god, nine and a half million people have read one of my articles. I mean, it's just it's stunning. It just totally blows me away. And it's because of people like Crystal and a couple other users who made a point of stepping in alongside me early on. Is the next presenter here Beria? Okay. More questions? Oh. Is the other other speaker here? Okay. I'd be happy also to take any other questions at the end if we have time or if you want to ask me personally, just find me and I'd be happy to talk about and if um you can also email me. You can find me on wikihow crystal at wikihow.com. Uh, I my name is Stasi. I'm from Russia. Um, her name is Lila. She's from Argentina, and uh, uh, can anybody help? She's from Argentina, and she was an organizer of Wiki Women Camp, and uh, Anya gives us moral support with all of it. Um, so uh, we have problem with Technica, yes. Wiki Women uh, Camp was a camp that was held a month ago from uh, 23rd to 25th uh, of May in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. It was a meeting uh, of um, female gender Wikipedia editors. It was a multilingual meeting, uh, both in English and in Spanish. It was a very interesting experience, and we want to talk to you about it. And we want to not to speak uh, many about what we made, but we want to speak with you what we may do uh, with this in the future. Uh, at first, uh, Wiki Women Camp it wasn't uh, a conference like Wikimania, for example. Um, I hope we'll show you how it was. <laughs> Because we haven't scheduled, we haven't agenda uh, before the conference. We have a clean paper and we have three days. Um, there were for about uh, 20 people on it, on this camp. And it is it was open space camp. It means, yes, it is logo. I'm glad <laughs> we begin. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, we decided to make all of it in the last moment. I hope that it will be okay for you and you support us with it. <laughs> so, agenda. We, we have a clean list at the zero time and it is uh, the, our agenda at the last time, at the last day of the conference. Uh, every of us who want to make any talk, we took paper and put it on agenda. So at these three days, we have talking about uh, very different issues. For example, uh, women in chapters, uh, um, organizing wiki events, it's not a gender issue, but we uh, haven't uh, purpose to speak only about gender. We want to work together, but uh, not only um, uh, to reach the purpose to improve uh, amount of women, not only. We talk about Wikipedia and education. We have uh, the section about it on Wikimania, as far as you know, uh, about using wikis for project management, about uh, injuring, uh, measuring impact of uh, Wikimedia on universities, uh, about uh, 
relations between Wikipedia and free software uh, communities, and uh, not only relations, but what's similar and what's different. Uh, and of course, we have a lot of talks about uh, dealing with abuse on Wikipedia, because about um, gender and edit wars, and what we should do to improve the amount of uh, women in Wikipedia. Because all of us have experience uh, of problems in Wikipedia, of course, if it's uh, normal for every work and we may talk about it uh, to each other and we and our purpose was to find uh, the solution of the such problems open space means that we not only mm, have an agenda that we not only do it by uh, ourselves in the process of uh, wiki women camp it means that we haven't talks like even like now we begin to talk about the problem for example abuse let's talk about it by the circle. And at the end of the conference uh, of the camp, we have uh, four uh, working groups that are uh, looking for solutions, uh, what we may do. <laughs> uh, so we decided that we may do create, for example, emergency women list. It's a list uh, to report about uh, different women problems in uh, different Wikipedias, or maybe a deletion of uh, important articles, maybe something else. We decided uh, to translate the results of uh, our um, camp for such many languages as we can. We want to create an authority square about to reporting about different uh, kinds of harassment. Uh, we decided to relaunch Wikichicks. Uh, Wikichicks uh, Wiki it's a wiki uh, that exists about uh, a problem of women in uh, Wikipedia projects. It was died because of an activity, but we decided that we need it. We need uh, the place where we uh, may find all information about problems, about ways of solutions. Because, for example, after Wikichicks we have uh, Wikigenera, uh, conference and uh, there was there was Sue Gardner. Sue Gardner was uh, a participant of our camp at the last day, and she w was made a talk on the next day on the general. And when she began to speak about a uh, women problem, uh, it was uh, very strange for me because uh, our group was discussed for some days before, and we found uh, more reasons, uh, more problems of women than Sue from her personal experience. Because uh, we are a lot of girls and she's alone, yes? And we may try to, if, if every uh, woman, every group will uh, begin uh, to find these problems again and again from the zero, it will be um, not very useful work, yes? So, relaunch Wiki Chicks. I don't know how it will now, but maybe, if someone interesting, we may uh, try to write a letter in Wikimania list and uh, look for those who are interested in and try to begin to translate, try begin to uh, discuss, try begin to uh, look into solutions. Hello, uh, I want to apologize first because of my English, I'm, I feel <laughs> quite limited to speak, but um, I wanted to add a, a pair of uh, things about, um, for instance, um, our working in Wiki Women Camp in, in Buenos Aires, the, especially the team of people from uh, Argentina and uh, I, um, that um, meet there, um, was trying to um, generate some uh, gender oriented materials from training uh, women about uh, a Wikimedia project, especially Wikipedia, but not only. And uh, after Wiki Women Camp and Wiki Gender, Wiki Genero, uh, we have started in Wikimedia Argentina uh, a, a kind of network uh, with the gender departments at the universities. Uh, 
when it, we uh, are running, are, are beginning to run some workshops with scholars, feminists especially, and uh, we have done just one, <laughs> the first in last June, and the idea is to to um, articulate also all of them in a kind of uh, network, a national network. And uh, in the idea to to give support to um, the 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 life of, of the articles that uh, usually feminist and gender activists decide to edit, uh, quite controversial <laughs> uh, ones uh, generally. And this is uh, one action uh, directly related with uh, Wiki Women Camp and Wiki Gender in uh, Argentina, and also uh, um, the the another one is uh, the idea to to um, uh, build or to uh, create a gender specific uh, or gender gender oriented uh, training materials about Wikimedia project. Uh, it's such a challenge, uh, but uh, the idea is to associate us with uh, the feminist and, and uh, uh, gender movement in Argentina, uh, trying to, to attract them to our goals that are uh, yours also. So, uh, Wicked Women Camp was uh, an unusual experience, and we are going to repeat it. Uh, organizer of this was not only Wikimedia Argentina, but uh, Wikimedia Australia, and we are glad to receive help from Wikimedia Germany. It was very international uh, um, camp, but uh, without uh, these chapters, we cannot do it. And we are uh, going to repeat it in uh, the next year in Australia already. So every woman in this uh, room, even sex or gender, uh, she may uh, try to look for news about all of it. And I strongly recommend to take part in it because uh, if uh, we will have more people in this camp, we will have more um, personal experience and we will get uh, the better result. Uh, I, I hope you support me in this idea. So, uh, we very uh, the author of this talk, she didn't want to show you any slides. She didn't want to show you maybe any, fo uh, even any photos. She wants to talk with you what we may do uh, in the future. Uh, I said to you that uh, our that was were our ideas about mailing list about. Uh, uh, Yes, about uh, different uh, activities, uh, but what you may ask us, we, we are ready to reply about questions about this strange uh, camp, about uh, strange because it was uh, open space, yes? Uh, because what will be next, uh, what we may do together. I, I will be glad to receive any questions about all of it. Because I understand that we are very, have very short talk, it's uh, only summary. Maybe you know what's in this uh, theme topic is interesting for you, so please ask it. You, the next Wicked Women Camp is in Australia in two years? Not, not in two years, in, uh, in the next year. In next year. Yes, in the next year. Uh, I'm not an organizer, I'm only a participant of Wicked Women Camp. Uh, <laughs> yes, can. but uh, I think that we will have an announcement on it. For example, about this camp, it was held in May, and the announce was in December. I think that... Uh, is it going to be part of a, a larger conference in Australia, a larger wiki conference in Australia? In Argentina, it was uh, a single event. Okay. No, it's it was an idea in, in when finishes the camp, when we were finishing the camp, we were t uh, evaluating the idea to to put the Wiccan Women Camp uh, next or before another big activity such as uh, you know, a, a Wikimedia Foundation activity or any free culture activity in order to... to uh, Yeah. Uh, m moreover, m the 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 Wikimedia Foundation has uh, a, 
uh, support uh, the idea with but it's chapters initiative. It's personal it's initiatives that supports by some chapters and yeah. supports by a foundation too. Uh, yes. I'm sorry we haven't a uh, man who helps us a bit. <laughs> Uh, what? Um, I, I guess the yeah. notes from the camp. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I, you may see on Meta, it is the page uh, Wiki Women Camp. Right. And we have uh, the page Agenda, and sub pages of right. Agenda is results of our camp. Right. I, I, and we ha on the Commons, we have a category of Wiki Women Camp uh, uh, 20, 2012. Uh, there is a lot of photos, and um, we have all results of every discussion on the paper, and we put it on the walls, and we photo these walls with these results. So you may sh you may see all that uh, we have right. on Commons. Yeah, I, 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 read, I read all that because um, I'm, I'm very interested in the topic, and I was really excited that the camp happened, and I, I read I read it all. And um, my question is, what can those of us that weren't at the camp? do to help the people that were at the camp do the things that were there? Because, I mean, you, it sounds like you all came up with some really great ideas. So what can we do to help? Because, so, you know, we're only going to get together maybe once or twice a year, some of us. So we're going to have to do a lot of this stuff, like online, you know, trying to figure out how to collaborate with each other. So what can we do to, you know, be before the next camp happens, like, what can we do to help make some of your all's ideas that seem like really good ones um, happen, I guess? Uh, for example, uh, you may do any survey in your country, not may, no, maybe in country, maybe in your language Wikipedia, to understand what happens, because uh, personal experience is good, but uh, not objective, yes? Uh, I'm personally, I, before uh, the last Wikipedia, I asked our feministic society why you didn't edit Wikipedia, because, uh, yes, in Russian Wikipedia we haven't a lot of girls, uh, and I asked them, and uh, that's why I have what to say on Wikipedia camp. Uh, to say it's many, really. If you will know what you want to say on Wikipedia camp, it's good really good. If you will read uh, this information on Meta and will translate it or will uh, show the link on it to someone, it will be the help too. I, I just want to add uh, one other thing. In uh, Wiki Gender, the, the another event uh, that is, it was a, a kind of more traditional conference with uh, uh, participants from Argentina and also from here, from the state. Uh, uh, there was a, a researcher from the University of Minnesota that uh, she's part of the team that has made one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, uh, research about gender gap in Wikipedia. Um, uh, we are preparing uh, with all this material. We, we have recorded the, the talks of the, the six uh, uh, speakers. Um, uh, we are uh, translating mm, in, in, in both languages, and we are preparing a publication uh, for for with with that informa this information and also the, the translation of uh, Wiki Women Camp uh, conclusions. Thank you. Um, because it's so hard. I mean, I, uh, the concept is great, but it, obviously it's hard for women to get, you know, most women to get to some place or way around the world. Have you thought about trying to encourage people to do it by continent or? by larger countries, by some of the larger countries? At Wiki Women Hub, <coughs> we have only 20 people from all countries. It, it wasn't, uh, as far as I know, it wasn't because it's hard to reach Argentina. It wasn't uh, because it wasn't many applic applications to take part in it. Uh, as far as I heard, uh, 
organizers want to make uh, this camp in Argentina because it's near America. So they uh, waiting for American girls uh, on it. And uh, we have only one American girl. She was organizer, and now she's living in Australia. So <laughs> we have <laughs> an American at <laughs> all. Uh, now uh, we we will be glad in if this idea will be so popular that uh, it will be it will make sense to think about different continents. Yeah, I think it's it's a very good idea because I'm more sustainable also. Please, questions, please, give me a question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to speed up. One more? Sir? Oh, I'm sorry, he didn't see I'm it. sorry, that I'm a guy, but I have a question. <laughs> 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 um, I, I don't know, uh, much like Crystal, I, m most of my interaction with wikis has been on WikiHow, so I, I, I have been unaware that there, except through press releases and things like that, that there has been such a gender gap have you noticed um, within your um, within your translation of Wikipedia that the, the gender gap is still there? I kind of wonder if the gender gap is is universal th within countries and by language, or if it's just a United States English or just English. Thing. It's international. Okay. It depends uh, from we the. We don't know it really. <laughs> uh, yes, for Russia, for example, I have told about it on Wiki Women Camp. We have two different statistics. I know one statistic uh, from the settings of Wikipedia. You know, in Wikipedia, you may uh, choose your sex in preferences. Yes. By these statistics, in uh, Russian Wikipedia is. Um, mm, don't remember right now, something like 20 persons of women. It's many, really. It's a it's good result. It's the best result on the moment of the statistics. But this, the last uh, editor survey shows that in Russia, it's only six, six persons of women mm. editors. It's a different way to receive statistics. And yes, to receive a real good uh, statistics is a ta task for us. We haven't uh, good task. We have some uh, ideas that, for example, Russian girls may not may uh, check f uh, male sex, for example, because they may thought that it gives uh, their opinion stronger. Maybe, but we okay. don't know it really because it's internet. It's anonymously. If uh, someone h will help us with good statistic for every country, it will be great too. But in any way, we know that problem is exists because six persons or twenty persons, it's not fifty persons. Yes. So it sounds like even though there is a gender gap, there may be different reasons for gender gaps in, for example, in Russia than it would be in the United yes, States. Yes, and Wiki Women Camp is international camp. That's why we may try to look for all reasons for all countries. We may. It's I not to say that we really do did it, <laughs> but we may. Another uh, interesting idea that came up in uh, Wiki Gender during the conferences, the talks, were the, the idea that there are two kind of uh, gender gaps. One regarding to women participation and another regarding to uh, content related to gender topics. And maybe uh, any of each needs uh, different strategies to be uh, fight. You want to, to say something, I know. <laughs> Um, I just want to say that um, the other speaker from Poland is not able to attend this session. So uh, I guess um, you guys can feel free to ask more questions to all our speakers today. So I would like you to come up to perhaps the podium so that you can continue to take questions and continue our interesting q and I think that would be great. People have a lot of questions for you about statistics for sure. Yeah, and yeah. please do continue. Oh, I see. Ah, sorry. Well, just to get into a little comment on what the other speaker was going to talk about, like uh, wiki, wiki sexism. Um, I just, in my experience, has gotten a lot better in the last year. Um, I know just before the press releases and everything, and I'm, I work in, I, I edit a lot in the Israel-Palestine 
issues. So you know there's going to be hostility already. And then you come as a very upfront woman who disagrees with the, the majority, you're going to be in trouble. And I've just found I've been in a lot less trouble the last year. And that it helps to say things like, gee, didn't uh, Sue Gardner send out a press release about wiki sexism? Is this wiki sexism I'm experiencing? You know, just little comments like that, I think making them aware that this is no longer acceptable, that something's being done about them in whatever topic you're in or any time you get it, I think is a good way of just, you know, just politely reminding them people are now dealing with this issue, so cool it. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I was trying to use in Spanish the inclusive gender language and I was heavily contestated <laughs> by women, and I was feeling defeated, and I abandoned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> gender, uh, sexist language in Spanish is a kind of very controversial topic <laughs> ever. <laughs> In the workshop we were uh, running in, in Argentina, it was one of the most um, difficult uh, things to deal with. We discussed the translation of uh, words about uh, Wikipedia, which can be added by everyone, encyclopedia, which can be added by everyone, because in different languages it may be um, everyone, is it he or she? And Wikipedia, is it uh, he or she in, or it in different languages? Yes, it's a question. How to make maybe uh, this uh, translation more natural? It's what to think about, because it's not a uh, talk with uh, really answers. It's about what we found, but we are only 20. There are more people than we have had on our Wikivomen camp. So you have more ideas stat by statistical than we, are, we have, yes? That's why we are asking for questions, that's why we want to talk about it, that's why we hope that we will talk about all of it in your Wikipedias, with your friends, uh, with uh, those Wikimanians that are not here right now. Mm, so, I see that there aren't questions anymore, yes? Thank you very much. <laughs>